Hi everyone, welcome back to Life in Technologies YouTube channel and thank you for watching. So this is a continuation of our IP RAN training series where we've been covering how to do BGP design for IP RAN network. So in part two of this series, we'll be focusing on how to do into AS BGP design for our IP RAN network. So as I've mentioned before, the IP RAN network normally spans regions or clusters and it's always a best practice to divide this uh, entire network into small segments, into small autonomous systems, so that it, there is ease of management and control of the routing information for the entire network. And once we've uh, established, once we've segmented our network into different autonomous systems, we need to do design for each autonomous system and then we need to ensure there is connectivity between these autonomous systems and many times that's why we configure eBGP, the external BGP pairing between these sessions, these uh, clusters to ensure that we have end-to-end -end connectivity. So our focus today will be to discuss how we do intra AS BGP design for our IPRA network for service provider. So you can see that this is the setup of uh, the general IPRA network. So we have RSGs, we have RSG1, RSG2, we have SGs, SG1, SG2, SG3, and SG4. And then we have CSGs, and we have used different topologies just to be able to illustrate how we achieve connectivity for different topologies. So we have ring topology, we have access ring 1 and access ring 2. Remember, it's always best to have ring topology because of its redundant nature so it's the services are protected in a ring topology then we have sparse if i can just illustrate we have a sparse site here then we have a chain for the sparse and chain they are only connecting to one asg so uh, we have connections between the SGs and the RSGs and the RSGs are connecting to the controller. This could be the 2G controller, 3G controller, 4G or even 5G controller and even the internet could be connected to the RSGs depending on how the service provider network is designed. And then we have base stations. So these are base stations which are now serving the users. So uh, remember at the end of the day we need to ensure that there is communication from the base stations to the controller and that's why we are exploring how you design these protocols from the IGP because of course you need reachability and then you need to exchange the service routes between the controller and the base stations. So the first step of course we've explained that you need to configure IGP. We described how you can design ISIS how you need to configure ISIS and just different methodologies of how you deploy IGP on your network. So we are continuing with our BGP design and for this setup, uh, the first thing that we discussed last time is why do we need to deploy BGP on IPRA network? And the reason is, uh, remember we are using MPLS on our network and for us to exchange the label route or the VPN routes, we need a protocol that supports exchange of this route. So that is the main reason why we are using a BGP so that we are able to exchange the service routes all the way from the base stations to the controllers. So we'll be running BGP between these nodes, between the SGs and the RSGs, between the SGs and the CSGs. And how do we establish the peering sessions? So if you check on this topology, I've indicated that we have, for a ring setup, we establish two peering sessions. We have the primary BGP session. I need to change this. We have the primary BGP session established one SG and we have a second BGP peering session established to the second SG. So in this ring setup, as you can see for this, for this CSG, it's establishing one peering session to SG1 and it's also establishing another session to SG2. 
So uh, the main reason of doing the two peer recession is just to have protection, so that if we are losing protection to one of the SGs, the services will be able to switch and use the routes that are being learned from the other SG. So that's why we do primary and second peer recession, so that we have the master and the backup. One will be active, the other one will be on standby, just in case we are losing peer recession to one SG, the other SG should be able to advertise routes to the CSGs. And all these peering sessions that we are discussing, remember this one is intra S. So they are all IBGP sessions that are established between CSGs and the SGs. And the CSGs don't establish peering session with other CSGs. So the SGs will be in charge of managing routes from the CSGs, and then the SGs will be establishing peering session to the RSGs. So you can see that we have some kind of hierarchical architecture. The RSGs only establish peering session to the SG, then SGs establish peering sessions to the CSGs. And these are internal BGP peering sessions. So with IBGP peering sessions, we'll be able to exchange routes all the way from base stations to the controllers. So you can see for ring two. So uh one thing to mention is for accessing one, you can see that these nodes are only peering to the connected SGs. We don't configure any peering session between this CSG and this SG, no. We limit the peering session just to that ring, to the connected SGs. So when you go to accessing two, you can see that accessing two only peers to SG3 and SG4, and not to any other SG that they are not connected. But then for the C, for the SGs, SGs establish connection to the RSGs. Many times, of course, this could be kind of made because the SGs also need to have the primary and the backup peering session. So they are establishing peering session to RSG2 and RSG1. So one is primary and another one will be secondary or the other one will be backup. For the case of CSGs, in a SPA topology, you can see that we are already establishing peering session, IBGP session to the connected SG. So this CSG only has to establish a peering session with this SG, but not with SG2. Similarly, for the chain setup, we only establish peering session with SG4. So this node will establish a peering session with only SG4, and we don't need to configure any peering session between this CSG and other SGs that are not connected to the SG. And the main reason is if we are losing this connection, even SG3 will not be reachable. So as much as you can may configure it, there is no use. It will not be used for any purpose. Even for this CSG that is a SPA, if we do this connection, unless we have any other protection path, we don't have access to the, any of the SGs. So the services will be impacted or will be down before the link is restored. So many times when we are configuring the BGP peering session, normally we configure BGP groups. In our previous session, we also discussed BGP groups. So the idea behind using BGP groups is to efficiently manage the configuration and even to reduce the workload of the configuration. Remember, if you don't have uh, BGP groups, you need to apply each command on each individual peer. But with the uh, BGP groups, you can apply common configuration, for example, the connect interface, the route policies, you just need to apply them on the group. So on the SGs, we'll be creating groups one group for peering to the CSGs and another group for the peering to the RSG. So we have two groups, one for the CSGs and another one for the RSGs. And then we apply policies accordingly. We'll be applying common policies of the peerings towards the CSGs and we'll also be applying common uh, commands on the peering that are towards the RSG. On the RSG, we also need to create BGP groups and these groups will be just one group of course and this group will be the one peering to the SG and then we can apply common commands or the routing policies on the group.
So, so once you've created the groups, we can now add these peers to the group. Another thing that we can use is BGP dynamic groups. So with BGP dynamic groups, especially if we have a proper planning for our IP addresses, let me say, for example, accessing one, we know it will be using a given IP prefix. So we don't need to make configuration on our SGs. We don't need to make BGP configuration changes on our SGs anytime we are integrating a new CSG. We can just define dynamic groups on our SGs and then we only need to configure the CSGs and the peering session will be able to come up dynamically on the SGs. So that is also a good a technique that you can use. You can use uh, the BGP dynamic groups on the SGs and even the RSGs, depending on how you have well defined your uh, subnets or the IP address for different rings or for different networks. But it's something that you can consider so that you are also minimizing the number of changes you are making on the SGs. So, so for our intra S BGP normally we use private S numbers. Remember we have public and private S numbers and for the intra S intra S BGP pairing for all these different clusters normally we use the private S numbers and we know the private S numbers ranges from 64512 to 65535. So many times we select one of the private S number and assign it to the cluster. So for this setup, we are using a S65510, which is a private S. And then when you are now connecting at the point of interconnection to the internet or the external networks, you can now use the public S. Then for the deployment of service, remember we are talking about the VPN solutions because at the end of the day we will be configuring VPNs on this network. So we have what we call the hierarchy of VPN, the HVPN solution that we can use. We can either use HVPN or HOVPN depending on how our network is or the requirements on our network and even the type of equipment that we have in the network. If we have high end routers only or sometimes we have low end routers we need to choose between hvpn and hovpn solution and the two solutions we'll be discussing them in detail in our upcoming videos so this is all about bgp design for intro s remember oh, i mentioned that first we establishing multiple pairing sessions from the csgs to the sgs such that we have backup BGP peering peer. If one of the peering session goes down, we can still run learn, uh, the service out from the other peer that is up. And then uh, we are using BGP groups on the SGs and the RSGs so that we can easily manage the configuration and even apply common policies and con commands on just the groups which makes it easy to manage the peering sessions and even to reduce the workload of configuring these peering sessions. So we'll be configuring IBGP peering session, internal BGP peering session between the CSGs and the ASGs. The CSGs don't establish peering session with each other. And then the ASGs will be establishing peering session to the RSGs also. So it's hierarchy. We have CSGs to the SG and then SG to the RSG. And we don't peer like if you have a node in ring one, should not peer to the SG that is not connected to ring one. We only limit the peering session to the SG that are connected to ring one. And with this setup, we are able to advertise routes all the way from the RSG to the SG to the CSG and then to the base stations. So this is it, guys. Thank you for watching again. And please remember to subscribe to our channel, to leave your comments in our comment section, and also to like our videos. Thank you.